Hey guys, it's Brittany, back with this week's installation of Mommy Vapes. I'm um, going to be sipping on some ice water, excuse me, um, as the traffic drives by. Perfect. Kind of just sums up how my day has been going. <laughs> uh, anyway, do you guys ever get like vapors fatigue, what they call vapors fatigue? I've been try I need to remind myself to just constantly be drinking water. Um, my like strawberries and peach flavors that I've been liking just don't taste as good to me anymore. So had to switch it up, have my own liquid in here that I made over the weekend. And actually I think I just made it yesterday. Why did I say the weekend? I don't know. I've been kind of enjoying this recipe that I came up with that's like a cucumber, pineapple, uh, coconut, and a little hint of green tea. Uh, there is some spearmint and culotta in it. Uh, I'm going to see how this version goes before I share the exact recipe with you. But it's quite refreshing, if you don't mind a little bit of culotta. So, let's have a vape. <laughs> Crazy morning today. Crazy morning. Alright, so today's video is going to be about how I care for, maintain, and clean my devices. Before we start with all of that though, I have to give a shout out right back to Philip with The Spot here on YouTube. I'll link him below. He threw me a shout out earlier in the week and I just thought that was so super awesome. I'm hanging out in my kitchen just catching up on my YouTube videos and out of nowhere, boom, I hear a shout out to me. It was just so awesome. He is just such a rad guy. Go check him out if you haven't already. Thank you, Philip, for the shout out. Here's back at you, buddy. Uh, he's, he's just an awesome nerd, and I mean that in the most respectful way. I married an awesome nerd, so I just think it's awesome. He listens to a lot of really cool music, he's got a lot of awesome ink, I believe he's a tattoo artist, and he reads cool shit, and likes kind of the same TV shows that I do, so go check him out. It's worth it. <laughs> um... And I think there was something else I wanted to talk about before I got started, but I can't remember what it was, so let's just get started. Uh, for cleaning, I'm just going to talk about like how I clean my shit and how often I do it. Since I have the Vamo in front of me, let's talk about the Vamo with the Aspire Nautilus. And actually, I do have a quick question. Do any of you guys have a problem with your Nautilus tanks? Mm, I don't know. I do. I still like it and I still use it. But this thing will gurgle on me and it even has started to leak liquid out of my airflow holes and around the ring area. And it doesn't matter how uh, tight I have the coil screwed down. Um, I mean, I, I tighten everything on here to like finger tight. I don't grab tools and like crank it down. And it just, sometimes, it's a tricky one. I don't know. Do you guys have that problem? If so, and you have a solution, let me know. Uh, speaking of the Aspire, basically I just pop this thing off the Vamo, and I disassemble everything. I do this about once a week, by the way, because I change my coils in all of my tanks once a week, either on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Uh, I take my drip tip off, and I do clean my drip tips in rubbing alcohol. I just let them soak for a couple minutes, not too long. And then I just break this thing apart. You know, I don't break it apart. I just break it down. <laughs> um, and I just started rinsing this with really hot water, and then drying it really good with a paper towel, and even some handy Q-tips to just to get into that center shaft really good, because uh, I don't... I don't like putting this thing back together when it's wet, so I just let it dry really good, put it all back together, pop a fresh coil in, and I'm good. Now for the Vamo itself, um, I do take, I probably need to do this today because it's looking a little grimy. Um, I do get a cotton ball and just put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it, kind of the way you would with like nail polish remover, but with rubbing alcohol. And I just kind of very lightly go over it, just cover, you know, all my bases. I don't soak it down because I don't want the moisture to leak through my buttons, but just enough to like get it nice and clean. Uh, I will take this little ring off 
to expose the ego threading, maybe do the same thing with a Q-tip, just to dip it in just a tiny bit of alcohol, rubbing alcohol that is, and just clean off those uh, threads really good, and they get kind of gunky, you know, so um, that's why I do it. And then I let everything completely dry before I assemble and use this thing again, rinse my drip tip off, and I'm done. Takes, I don't know, 5-10 minutes, I think. And then as far as my EVOD goes, um, I used to clean my tanks, I'll just show you a tank, I used to clean my tanks with alcohol, with rubbing alcohol. Why is there hair? I'm just being bombarded by hair. Uh, I used to clean these guys with rubbing alcohol and that didn't work very well after a period of time. My green EVOD glass is dead now. Um, I didn't realize that there was a rubber o-ring or stopper in the top of, on the inside top of this tank and after cleaning it several times I noticed as I looked through the little peering window here that the rubber ring had started to fall down and then this tank didn't work very well after that. So since that happened and I killed a tank, a $10 tank, um, I don't use alcohol in my EVOD glass tanks anymore, I just use really hot water. Uh, but same thing, I, I pop off the drip tip, drop that in some alcohol, and then the bottom ring that houses my coils, uh, I'm, I'm not going to take it all apart. I'll open this for you, I'm not going to take the coil out. I'll pop my coil out, I don't put my coils in alcohol, but this bottom ring right here, I do clean that with alcohol. Just for a few minutes, same with the drip tips, because I don't want it to wear out those O-rings and leave me in the same boat I was before. Oh, and then the, the EVOD battery, um, uh, kind of the same method I used to clean the Vamo. I just get my Q-tip, dip it in a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and I will actually just kind of swab the entire outside of this thing. Again, not soaking wet, just wet enough to clean it. And then I do go in and uh, clean out the inside here where the heating element is with fresh rubbing alcohol, of course, and then I do go around my threads. And this Q-tip doesn't even have alcohol on it and it already picked up like a bunch of gunk. Gross, right? Uh, okay, then let's reassemble this guy. Uh, same thing, let everything dry before you pl pull it all back together and use it. Um, leaking liquids. Story of my life. If you vape, you probably know you always have liquid leaking or spilling or somewhere. Um, I actually also do the same cleaning method on my Ego Style Charger. Obviously not while it's plugged in, but I will get a tiny little bit of rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip and I do clean these threads um, because if the inside of my uh, EVOD is a little gunky, then I know it's going to wear off on this. Uh, so that's kind of all I have. I mean, that's what the kind of the ritual I go through once a week just to keep everything fresh, keep everything clean. After all, you know, we handle these things every day. We put them in our mouths every day. I think it's important to keep your gear clean uh, and disinfected once in a while. Never hurt anybody. My dog might start tearing at the front door. Sorry. Get down. Get down. I'm usually not that nice to her. Okay. Second thing up on the list. Um, Hazel, get down. Come here. Come here. Sorry. It's like this every day. Here, you want to make a guest appearance? This is my dog. This is Hazel. She's a dapple dachshund with funky colored eyes. And she's the neediest dog I've ever owned in my life. Okay, stay right here. We're not going to bark at the front door. <sighs> Next thing I wanted to talk about is um, some battery stuff. I think I touched on it a little bit uh, in my starter kit frustration video. This is a coffee vape that I'm experimenting with. Eh, it's it's alright. Uh, anyway, in my starter frustration, starter kit frustration video, I, t I showed you guys these little things. Uh, found out that these are pretty much just generic. They don't last very long. Uh, and I also learned that you should not stack your batteries. So in the Vamo, 
Uh, for a long time there, we were, before we got our, what did we get, our Panasonic batteries, we actually were stacking these in here to maintain that 18650 mode. Yeah, don't do that. Just don't do it. We know now. So whenever we have our uh, Panasonic's on the charger, I just put it in, uh, was this at 650? No, I'm sorry, 350, an 18350 mode, and I just use this until this one charges. Uh, since I've also purchased the IntelliCharger i2, I did find out that once this charger is done charging your battery, it stops trying to charge, it just stops charging altogether, whereas the one that came with the first VAMO starter kit, I don't think it does that. So, yeah, that's why we, we just exclusively use this guy now. Plugs into the wall right here. Um, yeah, so I like it. And then I also, we purchased two of these Panasonic NCR 18650B batteries uh, for the VAMO. We're probably going to be looking into some Sony's or some E-Fest once we get into more mechanical mods, uh, things like that. Um, another thing I did want to mention too about batteries, I'm not sure if you can tell, but once your wrapper, like your safety wrapper on your battery starts to peel off ever so slightly like this one, it's probably a good idea to replace it. So yeah, I'm going to have to do that. And I think that's all I have for just kind of basic care, you know? Upkeep. Weekly, regular upkeep. Um, Make sure that you're always putting your batteries in the correct way as well. Some of the devices, well, we only have two VAMOs currently, but some devices don't have that reverse battery protection. It could blow up, not blow up, but fry your things, your chips inside of your different mods, whatever. So just focus on battery safety if you're using removable, rechargeable batteries, please. Okay, so I think... I think that brings us to new and notable section this week. Last week I talked about TV. Today I wanted to talk about a couple books. Now, I guess the disclaimer would be two of these are not new to me at all. Um, I just wanted to talk about two of my favorite no novels of all time that I read over and over and over again. Yes, they've both been adapted into movie format. However, the books are so much better. The first one being William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist. It's a good read, uh, especially since it is October and it is Halloween season. I just dropped it. If you haven't read The Exorcist, read it. If you haven't seen the movie, read the book first. I don't know who hasn't seen The Exorcist by now. Um, the second one I've actually read so much it no longer even has a cover. But this is The Bone Collector by Jeffrey Deaver. Uh, so much better than the movie, even though the movie is pretty outstanding. So check out The Bone Collector. I wish I had the cover to show you, but I don't. But these are my two favorite novels of all time. I say that everywhere, anytime somebody asks my favorite books, it's always those two right off the bat. Um, the second one is a slightly different genre. Um, I'm not a comic book reader in general. I'm not a graphic novel reader in general, but my husband is. I have an entire bookshelf of them in the house, like top to bottom, practically floor to ceiling, uh, graphic novels everywhere. And I did find myself several months ago reaching for something new to read, uh, so I did. I grabbed Lock and Key. Uh, these are in, are these trades? I think these are, this is like the trade format. I believe these were uh, originally released as single issues, you know, single issue comic books, really thin. Uh, but he did collect these in the trade format. That's number two. This is number one. I believe there are five or six of them. I did read all of these. Lock and Key by Joe Hill. Joe Hill is actually Stephen King's son, and so far, I mean, I've read this whole thing, and I've never read anything else he did, just Lock and Key. I loved this. It's um, not your average graphic novel. It's not superhero-like. There's no flying. There's no wearing tights. 
Uh, it's just kind of dark, but entertaining. I don't know. I don't want to like spoil it. So if you guys are into graphic novels and you've read this, let me know. If you haven't and you want to know more about what it's about, let me know. Okay. I'm going to go because I'm pretty sure Dora the Explorer is almost over in the other room, which means I'm back on duty. So <laughs> thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.